What a day to be heading to the beach. Most of Sydney will be heading to the sand and we implore you to swim between the flags. While the weatherman forecast one thing, down at Bondi, the sky told a very different story. 9am and a dense fog creeps onto the beach. The rare weather event is more than a novelty. For lifeguards, it's becoming a safety issue. This fog's really spooky. I can't see the southern end of the beach at the moment, so it's a little bit, uh, got us a little bit on edge. Back right over central, this fog's getting worse. At the northern end of the beach. Yeah, I, I, I can't hardly even see the, the front of the beach down here, mate. Right in front. With thousands in the water, seeing anyone in trouble is becoming increasingly difficult. Remain calm, I'm coming, I'm gonna get you. I'm here, buddy. Yeah, mate, grab my hand. Just relax, all right. This is ridiculous. Visibility is about 100, 150 metres. The lifeguards are all lined along the beach and we're, we're sort of trying to work out what to do. Like waiting for a pirate ship to come out of the mist and attack you or something. 11 a.m. Instead of burning off with the sun, the fog continues to thicken. Just having to think about whether we're leaving people in the water. Hoppo is faced with a critical decision. Should he pull down the flags and close the beach to swimmers? You know, liability, if we miss something, they're going to say, why didn't you close the beach? You might get 100 or so people out of the water, but is then everyone just going to swim everywhere? To make matters worse, thousands are about to attempt an inflatable thong world record. Now, to stay very close to shore now with this fog. We might have to close the beach soon if you don't stay close to shore. Got to close the beach, man. Got to close the beach. The decision is made. On one of the busiest days, on Australia's busiest beach, Bondi is closed for swimming. We've made the decision now, we're about to clear the beach due to the uh, poor visibility. We can't see anybody in the, in the water. We've got jet skis out the back and we're just slowly pulling people back in and making announcements on the megaphones. Do you want to go in, please? Just... All the people in the water, the lifeguards have closed the beach due to the fog. Ladies and gentlemen, we have closed the beach, we have pulled the flags down. Our visibility was close to zero. We don't know when we will be putting the flags back up. I do know the event is on hold with the fongs at the moment. We're extremely sorry for this. Your life is very important to me. Thank you. What a beautiful speech. It's like he's going for Prime Minister. Look at the mass exodus of the water. He's... It's like the Pied Piper, he's just sung a tune and, and here they come. What's happening? We're just closing the beach at the moment. Well, quite extraordinary. Looked at the uh, looked on the surf cam this morning, was going, oh, it's all misted up. There's, there's something on the window. And then realised it wasn't on the window. You couldn't actually see. Despite the danger, many disregard lifeguards' advice. Then, three hours after it crept in, the fog slowly retreats. You can almost see the other end of the beach now. You know, my visibility out here is perfect. I can almost see south. With 2,000 thong riders itching to go, lifeguards reopen Bondi. To achieve a world record, every thong rider has to join hands beyond the surf. Why? Why not? The record is set without a hitch. Not that Hoppo is celebrating. Yeah, you know, this event over, it, it, our day really starts from here because we're going to have the rest of these people around all day with their thongs. They're going to be going in the water for the afternoon and uh, massive crowds. 
Bondi gets on with the business at hand. With an estimated 40,000 on the beach, the boys in blue have their work cut out. But this time, the problem isn't in the water. Lifeguards are called to attend a man with a severe wound on the beach. Sydney teenager Daniel has suffered a deep wound. He says he has no idea how it happened. How are you feeling? Ah, oh, pretty good. I just want to go for a swim. Yeah, you can't be swimming there. Let me tell you, there's a lot of He's got a huge arm cut. He's pretty much taken his whole, whole elbow off somehow. Daniel and his friend have come to Bondi from the outer suburbs. Some appear alcohol affected on a beach where alcohol and water don't mix. Thanks for ruining my day at the beach, Robert. Nah, someone stabbed me. Up at the tower, it's no clearer what caused Daniel's injury. I don't know how it happened, but I just come to the beach to swim and everyone come up to me with a cut arm, so... You don't know how it happened? I just let you know I'm being drunk. So I don't, that's why I don't know. The laceration can only have been caused by something extremely sharp. It happened before I got here. I just got a look. What else you been doing today, you guys? Huh? Just drinking? Got the train from Bondi Junction yeah. and walked here. That's all we did. Then, Hoppo spots another injury. We got no one here. Oh, that's... What's that from? <laughs> What's that Is there from? another one? I don't know yeah. if there's another one. So is that all better? Another one there, so it's gonna, it's gonna have to be from glass. It's like you're trying to, be, trying to go through something. Yeah, it's 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 break windows and stuff again. No, I'm not like that. I bet this hasn't happened down here. No, no I, I said that at first, but... They look more like glass cuts to me. Who knows where they've been the last you know, hour or so, and I reckon they've just done something somewhere. It's all gone wrong. Come down to the beach. Hoppo briefs paramedics on the mysterious situation. It's like he's trying to go through a window or something. Because window. It's nothing from down here. He's got too many cuts. Hello, mate. How are you going? Paramedics. Going? Sorry, man. What's your name? Uh, uh, Daniel Weston. Bro. Sorry, I need to ask you. I'll let you light the cigarette first. Sorry, man. Oh, sorry. Hey. Be great. I think I got a cut arm or something. Yeah, like, how did you do that? I'm not sure. They they told me. Well, they're actually the ones that told cut cut me that I had a cut arm. You didn't realise you had a cut arm? Yeah. I think it happened before I got here. I'm not sure. It's pretty nasty, man. Now, you didn't actually realise this happened at all? I swear to God. It was quite a significant laceration. Really? It was been a surfboard and it completely no, took no. you by surprise. Well, you're going to need some surgery on that, mate. Are you all right, Daniel? But the festive spirit isn't shared by all. It's a day when behaviour can be good, bad and sometimes turn ugly. Agitated groups of young men roam the beach. Police are on alert. If he's carry on with it, he's going to be gone, all right? Mate, you know what I'm talking about. Too much tension from too many people, you know, for no reason. No one likes to see it, it's not needed. So, stay away. Then, the simmering threat of violence boils over. A man has punched a girl in the face. Huh? Up there, she's bleeding in the mouth. You just hit her all the like guys up there. They hit her in the face. She's bleeding. What do you need to happen? You gotta know who it was. Otherwise, nothing. Oh no! The shit is shot. Which one hit her? I just saw drops of ground. She's bleeding in the face. They were all, like bugging us for so long. What those ones there? All those guys. Well, they're bugging us forever. Black Rhino to Bondi Central. Just put the cameras directly between myself and you, and send two cops down. Some blokes just knocked the chick out. And couldn't ID the bloke. So just send them down, ASAP the cops. Yeah, copy. I'm just see the cops, I'll get them. The guys come up and start talking to us, like hitting on us, and we're like, oh, we're just laughing because we didn't want to, you know, yeah. start. And we're just like, oh, no, no, no. And then um, one grabbed my friend's boobs, and then she, when like, she clearly she, stated she that said that, that no, I have a boyfriend, I'm not in for this. She, he's, um, she slapped him, and then he just came up and punched him in the face. Yep. Next thing I know, she was on the ground with blood, and then I ran to the lifeguard and told yeah. him. Yeah. And the guy who did it, he was in well, red we... shorts, and he just ran off. And the rest of them were there, well, and the rest of them. One of them, the girl came up, she did punch her in the head, and dropped her to her knees. Police take up the chase. With tens of thousands at Bondi, the cowardly offender could easily get lost in the crowd. Police take evidence. If they find the perpetrator and prove the assault, 
he could well face a jail sentence. <music> 7.30pm on Australia Day and there are still thousands on the beach. The lifeguard's shift was meant to finish half an hour ago. Then, at South End, Whippet rescues six swimmers on his own. Suddenly, he abandons the board for another swimmer. He needs urgent backup. They went along the shore, along the shore, along the shore, over, and then the current just took them into trouble. Take me back to the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is going to be all right in the summertime. Baby, in the summertime. Bacon scrambles to help in what's become a mass rescue. Whippet has abandoned his rescue board to save a drowning swimmer. Bacon eventually backs up. What started off two Africans turned into uh, probably six to eight people. just mayhem. The teenagers are Sudanese refugees now living in Australia. I'm scared. I'm plus I don't swim. So if I was there, I'd be nearly gone now. <laughs> it's a brutal lesson about beach safety. <laughs> there it's so deep, we don't, like, we don't swim in kind of this water. Like, the swimming pool, yeah, it's all right for that. Lifeguard's tolerance wears thin. Attention, everybody is being very foolish. Get out of the water, go and swim in the north end or go home and wrap it up. We probably may, would have had maybe five to six people dead. I mean, it's just lucky we've been held back tonight. I thought they That's would have drowned those people. Uh, the can't river. swim at all. Yes, you in the red. Go and swim somewhere else or go home and swim tomorrow, please. There was these two Aussie blokes that were just holding them up. And I looked and uh, one of them was swimming off and I was like, wonder where he thought he was brushing it. He just went and pulled the third one up from like, under the water. I didn't even see her. Go away. Go right down the other corner or go home. Next day, the crowds are gone, but there's little rest for the boys in blue. Brothers Kobe and Azza are called to the skate bowl. What's your name? Dominic. We're going to call an ambulance for you. So out of ten, nine out of ten for the pain, eh? Twelve-year-old Dominic may have broken his ankle. Uh, just going to give you some pain relief, Dominic. We're going to get you to do suck on this green whistle. Take some nice deep breaths. Not going to taste real good at the start, but it's going to help a lot with the pain. Okay. Dominic came to Bondi with his grandparents, but they've gone to get fish and chips. Put your finger over that thing. But there's another boy in trouble. A woman has lost her young son, Mitch. They came from the pavilion. They went to the toilets before they hit the beach. Uh, Lifeguards are looking for a boy wearing a green T-shirt. That main set of flags, it's like a lime green T-shirt. Well, I'm not wearing, um, no, that's not it. No, no. black. But then the description changes. He's got black pants. I think they've got a green. So they're matching? Yeah, they're matching. pretty well matching. All right, because the guys are looking for a green T-shirt. Oh, OK, I think it's black T-shirt, sorry. Guys, um, Pam, green. the mother, thinks it's turned into a black T-shirt with dark green logo. Young kids can do all sorts of stuff. They can duck up to get an ice block. They can go to the toilet. They can be lured up to the skate park. They can do a whole lot of things. Police arrive to assist the search. I'll get two of you just to go up to the park and have a look up around there, just along the parks and that. Got it. The rest of us will go down along the beach. And... Up on the promenade, Kobe and Azza move Dominic into the shade. Just keep sucking on that whistle. Try and put some ice on it. That's just your ice on it for you. Does that hurt all that? Yeah. Yeah. Just get the head spins. 
The green whistle has eased Dominic's acute pain, but it's having other effects too. You all right? Dominic, hey, have your eyes. Dominic. While Dominic has passed out, 20 anxious minutes have gone since Mitch went missing. Well, we're getting a little bit concerned now. We've got a lost boy and it's starting to creep on a bit now. Hey. Dominic comes Dominic. around. Dominic. Hey, keep your eyes open for me. You all right? No, stay, stay there. You all right? Thank you for your warrant. Yeah, you just, just a little bit of reaction from the, too much of the green whistle. His grandparents finally get back from the fish and chip shop. Dom. Uh, grandma's here. Dom. No. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? No, he's all right. You're all right, mate. You're all right. You dragged your pop away from his fish and chips, eh? I'm not going to get any neither. I hope he's got a couple of scallops in there for you too, eh? They're the best. As Dominic heads off for x-rays, a full search is now on for missing Mitch. Then, some news. We're about to check Leo. Police have a boy of the same age, but his clothes don't match any of the mother's descriptions. Yes. That's him? Black and red. Sorry. <laughs> Just sitting down there under the shade in the boardwalk. Oh, okay. So I just, yeah. really just hope that oh, nobody actually physically yeah, took him. You know, like something. Yeah, no fighting. Strange That's man or something it. took him. Oh, that was my my fear. Because one minute he's there, next minute he was gone. When kids go missing. Um, you know, we always ask where they were last seen and if it was near the water, that's when we do, you know, worry. Mum's distraught, but Mitch takes it all in his stride. Oh, Mitch, oh, where did yeah. you go? At the beach, of course. Yeah, but Mitch, you're not supposed to run off away from Mummy. You were a long, long way away from Mummy, weren't you? I know, I got confused. You got confused. OK, next time that happens, you need to go to a policeman, don't you? Mitch, you yeah. need to go to a policeman, don't you? Next time you get lost, what's going to happen? Go get a policeman. Yes. And yes. And so. you like my summer suit? Okay. Next time, Bondi's longest heat wave. Wait up, 52. As temperatures soar, so do the casualties. In shock, <laughs> unconscious. Out of their depth and a long way from help. Two people are fully going under.